Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Hey, guys. Today, we have a very special guest who is an ex-New Ager, and she is a Christian apologist, an amazing artist, and she is best known for her YouTube channel. She lives in New Mexico with her husband and two beautiful daughters, and today we're going to be talking about her testimony, how she was in the New Thought and New Age and didn't even know it. So without further ado, it's my honor to welcome Melissa Doherty. Melissa, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We're blessed to have you. We've had Stephen Bancars on and Dr. Michael Heiser, Doreen Virtue. We've had um, Jeremiah from Coltish. So we're blessed to have you because, I mean, you know all of them. So we're yeah. blessed to have you and for you to share your testimony with us today. So mm -hmm. um, before we get started, Morgan, do you actually want to pray for us? Yeah. Yeah, let's pray. Dearly Father, I thank you so much for this time and just thank you so much for what you have done in Melissa's life. And I'm so excited to hear and uh, I just pray that it'll be, uh, well, I know it is a testimony of grace, but I pray even as she um, says it again and as people hear that they would just recognize the grace of you, God, Amen. that they would just uh, not look to her and think, oh, she's so great, but that they will, their eyes will be turned to you because of this. And so I just pray that everything that she's come out of and anything that maybe the listeners are struggling with or those things that um, maybe they've realized that they've been thinking and that it's not of you, that you would just open people's eyes, that you would just soften people's hearts, that they'll be receptive to what you have to say to them today. And I just pray, God, that you would just bind the demonic spirits that want to try to twist these things and try to use these for evil. We thank you, God, that you are able to use all things for good. And I just pray, God, that you would help us to be um, submissive to you, help us to be uh, led by your Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would just um, give clarity and that you would just uh, show us what questions you want us to ask her, God. And uh, thank you so much again that she's here and that we get to talk with her. And thank you for her ministry. Please just continue to bless that. And I pray that it will continue to touch many lives. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're excited for you to share your testimony. We like mm -hmm. to remind all of our listeners that this is a conversation. So when Melissa shares her testimony, we'll probably jump in there and, you know, ask a few questions mm -hmm. or clarifications or stuff like that. So... I guess the first question to segue into your story, your testimony is, where were you born? Um, well, first, I encourage the questions. So thank you for, for asking them. Um, actually, I, was, I live in New Mexico, mm -hmm. and I was born here in Albuquerque. I live in Rio Rancho, though, mm -hmm. but I was born in Albuquerque and I uh, grew up a lot most of my childhood until around seven in Rio Doso. And then the next seven years of my life, I went to Oklahoma, long story behind that. Hmm. And then uh, at the age of 14, moved back to New Mexico. So lots of stuff happened in, in that time frame. But uh, my household was uh, divorced. My mom hmm. and dad got divorced when I was younger. Uh, it wasn't a very, it wasn't the best marriage. So it actually wasn't the worst uh, situation uh, or the worst decision that was made by my mom on, on her part. And uh, my dad didn't really have a lot of religion in his life. They got married in the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, my dad's side of the family is very Greek. And uh, so, but they never were practicing. And my mom, she went to like a Presbyterian church, uh, Lutheran church sometimes, but uh, didn't, would, I would not say that those were like Orthodox Presbyterian beliefs by any sense or stretch of the imagination. My great grandparents were Christian scientists. Mm. And if people, they're neither Christian nor scientists, mm -hmm. but uh, that's important to mention because it was their beliefs that really uh, undergirded my mother's beliefs yeah. and my grandmother's. Uh, I had a few uh, family members that went to Unity Church. I had a lot of mm -hmm. Unity books in my house, a lot of Christian science books in my house. And so overall, the 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 beliefs of my childhood were um, influenced yeah. by these religions and by these beliefs. And I was enthralled by them because I, my mom especially had a very, uh, I want to say like coexistent, tolerant type, mm. type of belief system, very mm. metaphysical. 
So when people think new age, I'm, I'm going to kind of divide the two. Yeah. They're, they're sisters, hmm. but I'm going to explain that there's a, son, there's a, there's a, there's a difference here. So like yeah. new age, you would think like Doreen Virtue, you interviewed her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did uh, tarot cards. She spoke to angels. Yeah. She uh, probably did crystal energies and uh, things like that. There's, there's a difference. Some people get into the occult. Uh, new thought is literally about your brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, more, more about the metaphysical uh, things that you can do and manipulate and affect with the way that you're thinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're a kid and you're told that you can manifest things mm-hmm. by thinking about them positively, uh, that you can affect your environment around you by basically manifesting and through visualization because you're powerful Mm -hmm. then that's a very powerful thing to think as a child like that Mm -hmm. a very big effect on me and my mom had lots of things happening to her uh as well and i wanted those things so i I grew up with this this look at the supernatural like it was an open book Mm -hmm. that it wasn't really bad and i had this stigma about certain christian aspects that is just closed minded. Like, oh my goodness, those Bible thumpers, what are they thinking? <laughs> like, they have yeah. no idea uh, um, how how limited they are. That was really the way I saw it. And I, I had like an, or a, a very, uh, I want to say, lust for the supernatural. Mm-hmm. That's like the best way I can put it, yeah. is yeah. that I wanted these things to happen. My mom mm-hmm. saw auras and, you know, claimed energies within crystals and even had visions. And uh, there was a time where she was laying on the bed. Uh, when we were little in Rio Dosa, we were little little kids. I have two other sisters that uh, were all in the house together, and it was nap time. And my mom was laying on the bed, and she's falling asleep. But as she's falling asleep, it's like this loud buzzing sound just overcame her and, and like, pulled her into this vortex vision. It was weird. And sh- what she uh, saw is she was going down this this tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, it's what she depicted to be Jesus mm-hmm. holding a book. And like maybe a disciple or two at the either side of him. And in the vision, she like looks up at him and understood what it said and then woke up and she was soaking wet. Like somebody had just thrown a thing of water over her and like things like this would would be on the regular. (laughs) And she called her visitor like this, this, this thing, this entity, this being that would visit her every now and then. And uh, it's been around since her childhood Mm -hmm. and she's only actually physically seen it once. And like all these, all these stories, right? Mm -hmm. So you hear that and you think, oh, Jesus. Mm. You think, oh, this woman that I trust so much, who is my mom, by the way, is probably the most honest woman I've ever met in my life Mm. Uh, to a fault. It's actually, (laughs) it's, uh, she like expects everybody else to be honest too. And I'm like, mom, no, people don't work that way. Um, So, but yeah, she, she has no reason to, to, you know, embellish. And that was actually part of the problem is that she'd have these things happen and have no context for them. Mm -hmm. She didn't have any answers. And so the background to that is very important because I'm growing up with these and the sense of mystery and the sense of allure to these types of things. And I wanted to know more. Mm -hmm. I wanted more of that. I wanted more spirituality. I wanted to know more about the mysteries of this spirit world and so I, I would dabble in those things as much as I could. I remember wanting to get into witchcraft in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I loved movies like, uh, what's that one? Um, the Craft. Mm-hmm. I loved movies like that. I, I thought that there's total truth to it, even if it was Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believed in that stuff. Mm-hmm. And all the while, and this is important, all the while, we would go to church. Mm-hmm. Um, we, wow. would, we would, we would, we would be Christians. And it was always told to me like, okay, so in other words, who was Jesus? Jesus was the example of what we could be Mm. literally, like literally, like little gods. And uh, I mean that literally. Mm. Yes. So if you see Jesus doing a miracle, well, that's just the Christ in him Mm. um, expressing um, his inner divinity. The Christ is in us all. So, and uh, to be clear, for people that don't understand this, this is just one concept that the Christ and Jesus are two separate things. The Christ, mm-hmm. think of think of it, let me rename it for a second. Think of it as like the universal uh, divinity within us all. That's mm-hmm. what they would call the Christ. So whenever you hear a New Age teacher talk about Jesus and Christ, pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus, it, he obtained the Christ. 
he became the Christ mm -hmm. and the Christ is within us all. And, and think about the theological damage of that. If you're reading yeah. the Bible and that's your frame of mind, then that's the vision, the goggles that you're going to see it through. Forget yeah. the Messiah, forget yeah. the actual context that it's in because there's metaphysical um, definitions behind what you're reading in the Bible. So Can I ask you a uh, question real quick. Yeah, sure. Go so ahead. what, um, so you're going to church. So mm -hmm. what do you think? Were they just not teaching against that or were you kind of blinded to it? What was it? Uh, both. I would say number one more though. Nobody, okay. nobody taught against this. And this kind of goes and rolls over into uh, my side of the story, uh, where things kind of shifted for me. So that, that's my background in that. Yeah. Um, I was always told and taught Jesus is a person. Jesus is, is God, but we are all God-like. Mm. And it was just a metaphysical type of Jesus. Mm. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, what I mean metaphysical, I mean that he obtained a, a sense of spirituality that was an example for us all. If you want to walk on water, if you had enough faith, you could mm -hmm. literally. Um, and I see uh, all of it, a lot of stuff, and I'll get into this maybe a little later, but I see a lot of this within like the word of faith, prosperity yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. movement that we're seeing in here um, in the world. But so that's kind of my background. Now, everything uh, kind of changed for me when I was a teenager, as it does for everybody. But um there's probably a lot of reasons why I was this way, but I was very lonely and mm -hmm. very de depressed, dark place, had lots of insecurities and really had no identity. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know who I was. I was kind of, uh, oh, the biggest people pleaser. I lied a lot. I'm sure everybody knows somebody in their life where they lie for attention or embellish for intent for attention. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I was that person and it was for attention as weak as that sounds, it was, it's just, I, I, I craved that. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I went through a really, uh, I would say it's a tough breakup, but that was an understatement. Like when you, I, when you put somebody to an idolatrous status, mm -hmm. especially in a relationship, when you don't have that thing that you're idolizing, then you have no life. Yeah. You have no, you don't have a will to live. And, um, I already had everything else not going for me. And uh, went through that. I, I basically got caught in a lie mm -hmm. um, with the the uh, uh, guy I was with at the time, and it was devastating because it was embarrassing. It was yeah. you know all these horrible feelings, all in one. And I'm like, you know what? Why am I even here? You know, mm -hmm. in come the suicidal thoughts, which you always I always had, mm -hmm. uh, but it was just forefront. Like the pain was real. I didn't want to feel anything anymore. I didn't want to live. You believe, what sorry. But what did you believe, like, if you were to die, what would have happened to you? Did you believe in, like, I blamed everything on the devil. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, um, I'm a, I, I, I honestly thought that it wouldn't be my fault. Mm. Mm. That it's yeah. basically the devil's fault. That if any, everything bad that's wrong in the world, uh, in other words, I basically thought that people were intrinsically good. Mm. Most mm. people were good. And unless you did something absolutely horrible in your life, then there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't go on to be in a better place afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, there, of course, there was no hell, except for the really, really, really bad people that deserved it. <laughs> and that was basically my whole aspect mm -hmm. of an afterlife at that point. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't scare me in that sense to die, but I wanted to die. Mm -hmm. And I, I had it all planned out on how I wanted to do this. I had um, uh, pills, I had a, the whole thing planned <laughs> and then something, you know how like little, little things like a butterfly effect, just little things get placed yeah. um, to, to make something happen like for a greater outcome. Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with one of my friends uh, this one night and what a friend didn't even really, she knew I was down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like hopelessly down and just didn't care. Uh, those are bad friends. And she gets a call from one of our other friends um, I, I think in my testimony, I'm, I'm just gonna, I, I gave him an, an alias. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll keep up with that alias. <laughs> His name was Mike. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we get a call from our friend Mike to in, invite us to this party, to go to this party. And at the time I didn't want to go at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I drop off my friends and I'm going home and I didn't want to go home. I just, I, I remember where I was and everything. I remember where I was driving my car, everything, the time of night. And I just decided, no, nah, I'm going to go. 
And I turned around and I went, I went to this party. Hmm. And upon coming to this party, um, I see Mike and he's like arguing with every person there. Like he's, <laughs> he's very, what are you doing? You know? And I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't pay any attention really uh, at the time, but it's, I noticed that immediately yeah. that, Oh, okay. Something happened with Mike. All right. <laughs> and I go and I, I grab a bottle of wine, sit down on the couch and I just start drinking and uh, I, I continually hear him just making issues <laughs> in the <laughs> background. And uh, I had another one of the friends is over there trying to calm him down. Turns out that Mike had just gotten saved. And mm-hmm. he just couldn't be at this party without telling the gospel. This guy mm-hmm. was like an immediate evangelist, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he by far had, he was a few years older than me. So he had a ways to go as far as like spiritual maturity. Mm-hmm. But he was there just like, okay, guys, guys, we need to repent. (laughs) (laughs) We need to repent. Jesus loves you. Like just going, just telling everybody at this party. I'm like, okay, wrong, wrong house, dude. Like (laughs) actually it was the right house. And, um, Mm -hmm. I, I remember mumbling something about just like life isn't worth living. Mm. everything's horrible. Everything's terrible. And it was like the Holy spirit just reached across the room and gripped me mm. because Mike looked at me points right at me. And he's mm. like, no, there is nothing that you've done that God will not forgive. Oh. Wow. And I just remember that just him staring at me. And I was just mm. like, Ooh. <laughs> now the reason why this is, this is important. The reason why this is important is that in my worldview, in my spiritual worldview, there really was no concept of forgiveness mm, yeah. because you were not a sinner. Mm, exactly. And the concept of sin was lost on me. And it was in that simple sentence that I understood, I'm a sinner. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was, there's nothing you've done that he cannot forgive. That is not true. And it was at a point that I needed forgiveness. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah. perfect. And that cha- radically changed my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't remember the drive home. I, I remember that exact moment. It felt mm-hmm. like it would just sink into me. And uh, I believed. I believed him. All right. Mm-hmm. Whatever he said after that, I believed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I went home. And this was the coolest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like my favorite thing to talk about because I think it was, uh, the first miracle I've ever experienced, Mm -hmm. but I went to bed that night. All right. And now mind you, I hadn't read anything about born again, new creation, nothing Mm -hmm. like that. I hadn't read a page of the Bible, just like the little cherry picked parts that, um, I were told, I was told throughout my childhood, Mm -hmm. but I literally went to bed that night one way. Okay. I remember opening my eyes the next morning and just oh, I feel good. <laughs> like I feel different. Yeah. And I remember sitting up. I even remember how I sat up. I put my knee up and my arm. I was just staring. I was looking around my room, you guys. Just mm. the light was different. Wow. Things smelled different. Mm-hmm. Um, I could hear the birds chirping outside the window and it was the most beautiful. It's like I was a new person. Yeah. Like who mm-hmm. was that person yesterday? Yeah. I had no idea what happened to me. But I just know that I believed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that I believed what I I was told last night. And I want more of that. And that was the thing is that everything looked different. I wanted different things. I thought new things. Oh, it was amazing. But the biggest, the biggest thing, and I want to emphasize this point the most. I had the most insatiable hunger mm-hmm. to read the Bible. Praise wow. God. Oh, dude, I wanted more of whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Now, to give some uh, context to this, this is 2001. Mm -hmm. YouTube wasn't even around. Hmm. Okay, I'm not that old. (laughs) But kind of showing my age a little bit here. I was 16 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even think Facebook was around. Okay, Mm -hmm. so so there were still encyclopedias (laughs) on the screen. Yeah, like (laughs) if you wanted to do research in high school, you went to the encyclopedia and library still. For Mm -hmm. the most part, the internet was around. But it was nothing like how it is today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the biggest thing is, yes, I had that hunger. Go, 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 go. But this is kind of the undoing as well because I, I needed answers yeah. and I couldn't get them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, I, couldn't, I, I went to my mom and she only knew some things. But I never really liked going to her 
Um, I, I talked with my friend Mike about a few things, but it, he actually ended up moving away. Hmm. In other words, I really, I had a lot of questions. Okay. Yeah. So like, think of like the, the 101 questions that you ask. Okay. I believe now help my unbelief Yeah. because I have questions about hell. Mm-hmm. How did we get the Bible? I don't mm-hmm. understand this. This yeah. doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I had a King James Bible and I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> yeah. And I went to, it was the best summer of my life though. You guys, I had all these questions that happened in February of 2001 that whole summer was the best summer of my entire life. Mm-hmm. I had uh, it was an amazing honeymoon with God. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And then life starts, okay? Yeah. Um your your engagement to God starts. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And um it just questions. I went to an independent Baptist church, and if anybody doesn't know what that is, I want you just to see in your head just boot camp for Christians. <laughs> just <laughs> No tattoos, women wear dresses, sit up straight, King James only, very firm and strict. Mm -hmm. Uh, In some cases, I needed that. In other cases, it it was very difficult because I'm like, I don't feel like I can ask you anything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, There was a a lack of love in that sense. So Mm. um, I struggled with that. Lots of questions. And this kind of segues into how me being a Christian, this is how this happens. Okay. Me being a Christian going everywhere I could dead ends, especially women. Yeah. Because I, I want, I, I'm like, okay, I need to go to other women and seek out these answers. And all they really could disciple me on was marriage, <laughs> just, um, uh, marriage, encouragement and, and motherhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, that's really what they were. I don't know how we got the Bible. What? She's giving me a lack of faith over here. You know, like that's how I felt. I could not fit in, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking with Felicia Masonheimer, Felicia. and she was saying that like women nowadays, it's kind of like all you do is like you cook, you learn to be a good mom and a wife, and also know that you're the daughter of a, you're a daughter of the king, and know you're beautiful, and that's all you need to know, and then you're good as a Christian. You're woman. wonderful, and it's so you're sad, awesome. but that's what most churches are just teaching women and Bible studies and stuff. That's it. And so they don't even know, even in Christian churches, women, I just had a, it was that girl who was in the new age that you're talking about, Morgan, mm-hmm. she came to this uh, women's conference that I had and it was called Women's Awakening. And mm-hmm. I did that word specifically because I knew people like that would probably be like, ooh, awakening, like that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But it was supposed to be like awakening, <laughs> talking about God exposing the darkness in your life, exposing the sin. And I was telling all the women like how you're not... I mean, you're beautiful. God sees you, but you're gross. Like you're ugly. You're dirty. You're a sinner. Like mm-hmm. you need God to save you. And I at least had three women. That girl was one of them who did not like that. They did not like to hear that they were a sinner, that they had problems. Mm-hmm. They just needed to hear that they're good and they're beautiful. But anyway, I know that kind of went yeah. off. But that's where it's so sad because women are now told, "Oh, you can't be a theologian. You can't be an apologist. Like that's for men." And so. Anyway, they can look back at that episode, but we did that with Felicia and she was saying, no, women should be studying the word. They should know. They should show Mm. that they can give the answers too if a new believer, but a lot of times they're just told, no, just know that Mm. you can be like good if you get married and then have kids. Yeah. Mm. You know, in that aspect. And it's like, it's not that they don't, let me, let me be clear with that. It's not that they don't have a brain. It's that it's, it's, it's it's difficult to be kind of put into that yeah. bubble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and it's weird. I, I made a video about the mega church, I think it was last year, and it's like there's it's all about meeting the felt needs, the emotional felt yeah. needs. And mm-hmm. once those aren't met, they lambast the idea of having your uh mental needs met, mm-hmm. your theological needs met. Yeah. And this is a big part of the problem and it's ironic is nobody really understands the gospel. Yeah. Most of them in mega churches, sure. I would, I would submit and I would challenge most, not all, but most mega church pastors to ask their congregation what the gospel is. Yeah. That's part of the problem is that nobody really understands sin yeah, that's <laughs> true. and nobody understands the attribute of God's holiness. Mm-hmm. Like all of this makes sense whenever you understand these attributes of God. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's just none of that, none of this sunk in with me yeah. at the time at all. Nobody could explain these things to me. And mm. uh, there's a Calvary out here in Albuquerque. And um, I started going there and I enjoyed that because there was a very good emphasis on theology. But 
I, I still had these really specific, I had problem as a new ager. Now understand I'm growing up with this really lovey dovey view of Jesus yeah. and God. And I'm like, what's up with this violence in the old Testament? Yeah. Like what's, I don't, I had so many issues yeah. there. So what happens is, is you get these teachers that call themselves Christians. Mm-hmm. Okay. They, 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 they completely take that name. They hijack that name is what they do. Mm-hmm. And then they give these other beliefs that are anti-Christian, mm-hmm. but you think they're Christian. Mm-hmm. And how could they not be? Because they're loving, they're tolerant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're basically a walking coexist sticker. Yeah. Everybody has truth. Everybody has truth. How did Jesus is not the only way Mm. this Bible is one of many holy books that has some truth in it. And if God's going to reveal truth to us, he's going to continue to real reveal truth to us to fix that, to fix this book, because Mm. this is, there's something wrong with this. Mm. And we have more spiritual maturity. Now we have spiritually progressed. So these are the ways, this is how I thought and how this happened is the books on my shelf Mm. that I grew up with that said that they were Christian authors. Yeah. And I had no idea (laughs) that this wasn't Christian. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because they use Christian terminology, grace, salvation, Jesus, same words, completely different definitions. And I had nothing to compare it to because I didn't understand the Bible. Mm -hmm. I was completely Mm -hmm. biblically illiterate Mm -hmm. and I had no reason to read it because I had been taught that it's partial truth. And that's how they get away with picking and choosing what works. Mm -hmm. Um, That's loving and that's tolerant. So that must be true. Mm. Forget the context Hmm. because that's probably an error because I can tell that it's not as loving as, say, this other New Age teacher who's giving a different um, outlook Mm. on on that scripture. You know, so it's like they're they're putting more light and context and their spiritual maturity than the biblical writers did. Mm. Yeah. And uh, like missing books, things like that. I, I was enthralled with things like that. Um, Law of Attraction. I got really into that. And they they quote Bible scriptures. Mm-hmm. Can you, you explain know? to people who don't know like what Law of Attraction is? And also maybe list a few of those authors that call themselves Christians, but they're yeah. definitely... Oh, I'd be happy to. Um, <laughs> let's see where to start. Or how it can um, be first, even in the church. Let's... Sorry. Yeah. But even how oh, no, we'll get there no, later. No, yeah. She already has two you questions. Already have that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if it's in the same thing, yeah, how yeah. people bring the law of attraction into church even yeah. without knowing it. Yeah. And we'll talk about oh, this is great. Yes. Okay. So first, I'll say the law of attraction is first. You have to have it. The court, the core belief of any new age teaching and new thought teaching is you're divine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's new age, new thought. You are divine. You can make things happen because you have that inner divinity and they will claim that this is taught throughout all religions. It's interwoven. Okay. Throughout all, even Jesus taught this supposedly. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's important. Number one. So number two, the law of attraction is based on that concept because you are divine. You're also a magnet, um, in the universe, which means your thoughts and your feelings have power to them, Mm -hmm. which means if you're thinking about something, and you're worrying about something, this is why Jesus says not to worry <laughs> because then you're going to manifest that into your life. Wow. And that's a sin. And uh, sin and evil are, are uh, grossly reinterpreted. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's manifesting, visualizing. So think about this. Think about the pressure to always be in a positive mindset, helping others. These are good things, right? Yeah. How could this be wrong? <laughs> you're helping others. You're constantly not judging which is impossible, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, you're you're not you're not. But do you see what I mean? Like you're not yeah. encompassing this type of mm-hmm. um, yoke, if you will, on other people because you don't want to be judged. So you don't judge others. Well, I accept everything you believe, mm-hmm. unless you're a Christian, um, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like a Bible believing one. Then I have a problem with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and ironically, those were the people that I judged the most. Mm-hmm. And, and all the while, I think this is important to express that, yes, I do believe I was a born again Christian, just a really biblically illiterate one. Um, I I do believe that people can be saved, but in error. And I'll I'll explain later how God got me out of that. But, 
Um, so that's the essence of the law of attraction. Your thoughts become things based on your thoughts and feelings. That's the most basic way I can put it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a great uh, somebody. This became really popular uh, from the book The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Mm-hmm. Um, and endorsements of this book, you would have people like uh, Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle is a very big new thought teacher. And uh, Richard Rohr is a new up and comer, but he's actually out here in Albuquerque. Oh. Uh, he's more progressive and new age, but guys, he's a Catholic priest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wow. like it's, it's, yeah, it's like just pick and choose what you want and mm-hmm. call yourself a Christian. Wow. Um, you're redefining it. You're hijacking that term. Yeah. Uh, let's see another author. Uh, well, okay. Well, let's, if you're going to talk about is that one that you mentioned, what's that? Wayne Dyer. Is he one? Oh yes. Wayne Dyer is another one. That's another big one. Um, Emmett Fox. And uh, you have a lot of unity teachers that yeah. go along with this as well, mm-hmm. because um, that's what unity is. And it's ironically impossible to have the same beliefs and call them equally true mm-hmm. and, and call them all true at the same time, mm-hmm. because they can't all be true. Yeah. So truth is redefined as, A, if it doesn't offend you, um, if, you if anybody finds it offensive, or if it somehow is in a spirit of judgment telling somebody they're wrong, then that's wrong. And that would be against what I would want to believe. And we see this everywhere. Um, and actually, to name drop somebody, Joel Olstein is probably one of the biggest mm-hmm. um, names that I could give people as an example mm-hmm. of somebody who does the Christian thing, but uh, completely just yeah. has new thought teachings, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved listening to him um, because he was always positive. He's like and a motivational think, speaker is what he is. Yeah, even motivational. And I would argue that he's more, he's closer to people like Wayne Dyer and Oprah than he is to any biblical teacher. Mm-hmm. And people might be like, you know, upset maybe hearing that, but it's it's not me making that assessment. It's him, it's comparing him to the biblical mm-hmm. mandate mm-hmm. that we have as Christians. Yeah. And then you look at the definition of what new age and new thought is. It's like, oh, dang, he looks more like that yeah. mm-hmm. than he does that. So that's kind of where my bone to pick is, is that if you're going to be a Christian, have Christian beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're allowed to be, because I think the, I want you to explain this too. I think people hear the verse, judge not lest you be judged. And that now yeah. is like the biggest verse that new agers are, they don't call themselves in the new age, which you didn't at the moment either. You didn't call yourself new age, new thought or any of that. You didn't know. Nothing. I guess you didn't know, I didn't know what it was. What it was. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But you clearly were a higher spirituality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so but yeah. what would you say to people who think, well, you can't judge me. But my thing is, well, you're calling yourself a Christian, a Christ follower. And all mm-hmm. we're doing is we're not judging you. We're just showing what the word of God says. Mm-hmm. And then we're bringing this to you. And it's funny because then they feel like you're condemning me. I'm like, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you. But I think they take that as condemnation you're judging me but i'm like if you're in christ and saying that so what would you say to that can you judge someone if they call themselves a christian or what does it mean to judge in the biblical way 100 percent. yeah i actually have a video about this um there's a few things number one this is matthew 7 and this is uh, matthew 7 7 was actually the uh formula for uh manifesting ask seek believe Mm. So Matthew 7 was like a huge uh, chapter Mm -hmm. misused a lot by people in the new age and in new thought and judge not lest you be judged. And then they just stop reading. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Especially read when it's like 21 and all that. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, okay, um, if you keep reading, here's the thing. There's uh, I want to say off the top of my head, there's three things. First, number one, hypocritical judgment is wrong. You cannot, and that's the point of Matthew 7. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's saying, no, 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 no. Get the plank out of your eye first. Exactly. Then you will be able to make a proper judgment. Yeah. You cannot be a hypocrite. Exactly. So if my friend is cheating on her husband, mm-hmm. okay, and I go to her and I say, that's wrong yeah. in some sense, and she's like, how dare you judge me? Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me double check. I'm not cheating on my husband. Mm-hmm. I'm not in any sin that I can't make this sound judgment mm-hmm. as your friend. Amen. Yes, this is a this is a right and correct judgment, a hard one, mm-hmm. but that's a correct judgment. That's wrong. That is not okay. Like you're hurting people, right? Mm-hmm. And in our culture today, it's weird, is that 
if you offend somebody, even if it's said in truth and in love, mm -hmm. because they're offended, then you're judging them. Mm -hmm. which or they'll cancel you. Just kidding. Cancel culture. Yeah, they'll cancel you. Mm -hmm. um, so number one, if you're going to use the Bible to say that we shouldn't judge, you are kind of shooting yourself in the foot mm -hmm. because the Bible has mandates on how to judge, not that you shouldn't judge. Amen. Number two, harsh, critical, unloving judgment is wrong. Yeah. And this is the judgment that a lot of people associate Christians with, mm -hmm. unfortunately. It's true. And I have to, honestly, I have to kind of um, uh, be like, I have to understand that there's reasons for that because I went to, again, I went to an independent Baptist church. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Very legalistic. I'm not dogging on all independent Baptist churches, but I have seen this and it's, it's, if you're going to say something, even if it's true, the way that you're you're saying it in that manner um, matters. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, what is it? There's a hypocritical judgment, harsh critical judgment, um, well, incorrect judgment. Mm -hmm. But then if the, the idea is, is that even if it's true, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you're trying to, and we've lost this in our society on some standards mm -hmm. where... If you don't agree with them, that automatically thinks that you are judging them and being harshly critical to them when you're like, okay, well, let's let's try to see each other's point of view. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's what you're saying. I see that you're saying this and you're saying that this is a Christian concept. Okay. Now, but I'm trying to see it here. How does this work? Because the Bible, which is the Christian book, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> does this. Um, I'm trying to reconcile this. Well, you're judging me. Yeah. <laughs> That's not very loving of you. I'm like, you're judging me yeah. as well. Exactly. But I'm not exactly. taking offense to that, mm -hmm. um, which ironically is hypocritical judgment and not biblical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I would kind of just kind of um, challenge people to assess what they're actually thinking, that if they're offended is very different than me harshly judging you mm -hmm. for what you're saying. And I have a job as well to do, and this is important. I think Christians need to kind of watch this as well, um, because this was my problem, guys. And this is one aspect of why I found the New Age so alluring. Okay, this is important, is because I would see this. Um, okay, if Christians, if what they're saying is true, their way they're saying it, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. this isn't. I don't want anything to do with that. If I, if I go over there, then I'm going to be a Bible thumping person and. I'm going to be against everything that makes it easy for me in this culture. And it just, it wasn't popular at all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's a stigma where you're, you're like an idiot. If you're a Christian, yeah. you're yeah. Like you've given up your brain, <laughs> you're closed minded, mm -hmm. you're narrow minded, mm -hmm. yeah. all this stuff. And I don't know, maybe it's because I've been in that mindset of seeing that. And I understand why they see it, even if it's wrong. And I think it's wrong. It's ironic because they're like, don't judge me. But they're making a judgment, a, a, an umbrella judgment mm -hmm. on a whole group of people mm -hmm. <laughs> without actually knowing mm -hmm. intrinsically what they believe to begin with. Um, yeah. So the church that I was in was was just really legalistic. And it was a big problem because I didn't want to be associated with that. And that's kind of the picture that I had of Christianity, of Christians in general. And I was just a complete people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do what was um, popular, I guess. It, at the time, I didn't think of it like that, though. I just wanted everybody to be happy, and I wanted to be liked, and I wanted everybody else to feel that way, too. Mm -hmm. So it was very important for me to kind of conform in that way um, because I knew that that's what I would attract to myself. Mm -hmm. that, that was my belief. Mm -hmm. And now fast forward to around 2010, that's when I had my first daughter. Mm -hmm. And there's something when you have kids that it just kind of starts challenging you yourself internally. Because mm -hmm. understand, I still had these questions. Yeah. I still did not understand. Um, I didn't even have a proper understanding of what Christianity really was, mm -hmm. which is part of the problem is that if you're going to, they call it a straw man. It's like you kind of build up what you think somebody else believes and you mm -hmm. attack that. Mm -hmm. Most people in the new age do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what proper what the Bible actually teaches. Yeah. They have no idea what the gospel actually is. They don't care to know. Mm. Um, because to them, again, it's that whole judgmental, you don't want to look at anything negative kind of thing. Um, but I had her and I still had questions and nobody could answer them. Mm. <laughs> and um, lo and behold, I'm thinking about these things, right? And my thought process at the time is what you think you attract. And lo and behold, two Jehovah's Witnesses knock on my door. Mm. 
And um, now remember, at this time, I thought all religions, it's basically religious pluralism and universalism, that eventually everybody will go to heaven. Religious pluralism is a fancy word for all religions are true. Hmm. Um, they just have different ways to God. So, so like, there's many that it would be like agnostic or those type of Yeah, man. Atheist. Atheist. If you're just a horrible person or just don't believe in God at all, like that was basically the bottom of the barrel, mm. you know, mm. that's kind of how I thought it. I'm like, how could you not believe in God? Mm -hmm. um, so they, they showed up and I thought I attracted them to me. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, these people are going to answer Bible questions for me. And little did I know, little did I know. I invite them in and I, I, I thought that they intrinsically had just basic Bible beliefs. Mm. And I thought most of what they believed was like a rumor, but it wasn't until around the third or fourth visit that I'm like, oh, no, that's they actually believe these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Jesus being Michael, the archangel was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, I know nothing about the Bible, but how did you come up with that? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> um, well, there's some mental gymnastics going on yes. here, like something else is going on here mm -hmm. because you can't just make somebody believe in something like that without some sort of leverage. I don't know. Like I had that kind of mm -hmm. common sense and. Mm -hmm. Um, I did have the internet at that time and mm -hmm. YouTube was around. And so I felt the Holy Spirit for like the first time in so long, like that same feeling. It's more than a feeling. It was just like an urge. Mm -hmm. Go research, go mm -hmm. research, go, 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 go. And like their worst enemy is the internet. So I went <laughs> on the internet and I researched a lot and it guys, it was a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. It was just, I couldn't stop researching this religion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was more than just that religion. It was, I learned about Mormonism. Mm -hmm. I learned about um, Jehovah's Witnesses, but um, it's more than just learning about them because you have to know what the Bible teaches to know why it disagreed with their belief. Mm -hmm. And that was key. Um, it was a very safe and very ultimately wise thing that God used Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. to teach me about the Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Ironic. Yeah. But it was like if, if, if I had somebody like a Christian yeah. okay, come up to me. And be like, let me show you in the Bible why you believe, why it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I would have immediately had just this, how judgmental of you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I I did this on my own. Mm -hmm. And because it, it was safe and it was it was like there, what, it took the edge off because it was this third party religion yeah. that I was researching. But at the same time, if that, what that religion believes is wrong then that means that the Bible um, compared to it has to be right. Mm, and funny. if the Bible is right, then what I believe is wrong. Mm, like, yep. It was just the snowball effect. And uh, that was the hardest part for me was that last part is mm -hmm. that um, I'm reading things that contradict what I'm believing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, among one of them, for example, is that I always thought it was Christians that said Jesus is the only way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Jesus says he's the yeah. only way. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's important because this isn't a Christian claim. This is a Jesus mm -hmm. claim. Amen. It's good. And then the gospel itself, like understand I believed, but I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always, I love that scripture where it's like, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. I love that scripture because yeah. uh, that was me. And uh, like the gospel, like the concept of sin, I'm all, oh, okay, this is, I saw the crucifixion completely different. Like there was, there was a whole aspect of Jesus coming to die for sin that I understood because, because again, the backdrop against what Jehovah's witnesses believe, mm -hmm. but it was a big, big, um, big ego issue, like pride. Mm -hmm. And then I came upon Genesis three and it wasn't that I was just reading my Bible. This, I found this in a forum, a random forum in my many, many miles of researching down the rabbit trail, mm -hmm. um, rabbit hole mm -hmm. of what the Bible teaches. It was a forum, and it was about Eckhart Tolle. And I'm like, oh, uh-uh. Mm. <laughs> Nobody can say anything wrong this about guy. this man. Yeah. Yes. I was like, you can't attack my people. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I really thought this, that nobody could say anything bad about people like that. Wow. And I still don't know who this person was. I don't know what this forum was even about. But um, I was curious because I was going down the rabbit hole. And I went onto this forum, and it was like the best thing ever. Because one of the things that this person said, and they were very kind, by the way, mm -hmm. like it was a very good example for me to see this kind of um, respect for somebody that they disagreed with. And one of the things, jokingly, at the end, he's like, 
huh, you can be like God? Sounds like a slimy serpent to me. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like Satan. Yeah. Oh, my word. And it just blew my mind. I'm like, how could I have fallen for the for the the serpent's lie? Like mm. literally the oldest trick in the book <laughs> that you can be like God. Yeah. Had I read the Bible, this would have been obvious to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that started that, pulled the rug out from under me, um, mm. just completely kind of, I, for lack of a better word, like deconstructed those beliefs. I'm like, I have to take a step back from what I'm doing here. Researched the Bible. That was very big because I couldn't go anywhere mm-hmm. without understanding where the Bible came from. That was my biggest thing is that if this is my authority, I need to trust this. Yeah. Um, do I still understand everything in there? No. Do I have a lot of questions still? Yeah. Um, there are things I don't understand, especially in the Old Testament, because mm-hmm. as a new ager, it's fluffy, feel good feelings all the time. Mm-hmm. So to go through the Old Testament you're reading a 6,000 year old history book, a Jewish history book. Mm -hmm. And there's, you have to make some effort to understand a, the first century mindset. And you guys have interviewed Heiser. So I'm so glad you, you, you did that because he's really big about that. He's like, how would a Jew from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, see the tower of Babel, Babel. And, um, it made sense. So like those things I needed, Mm -hmm. um, And to make a long story short, um, from that point, I mean, it's been a long story. I'm kind of ranting this whole time, but, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, the, uh, that's, that is what started me getting me into ministry. That was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I started, uh, encounter cult ministry Mm -hmm. to Jehovah's witnesses and Mormons. And I have an undying love for them. I love them so much. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have an undying love for the loss. And I think that if you don't, I think we're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And, it was from there that I started uh, eventually starting ministry into uh, new age and things like that, teaching people about what it is. And then I started getting it. It started coming into our churches like more and more. I'm mm. all, no, yeah. no. Like, why did I even leave these beliefs if yeah. we're calling them Christian guys? Like, yeah. no. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, and then YouTube, I started YouTube actually recently and still surprised that mm. people actually like hearing my voice. Um, <laughs> I love it. It's weird yeah, to me. I'm weird. like, Oh, okay. But I like that. I like not knowing what I'm doing, right. I'm just doing what I'm, what I'm gifted to do yeah. and just putting it out there and, and hoping that God can use it in some way that mm. somehow there's a word for it, but it's almost like a, your, it's like your story, like your back story to how you mm. got here. Mm-hmm. It's like, I hope to be part of that for somebody else. Mm. Mm. So, but, but yeah, that's basically what my channel revolves around theology, apologetics, things that I wish I had Mm -hmm. when I became a Christian, something to, to give you some sort of solid foundation, answering questions about the new age, even Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, because I love them to death Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, understanding theology, how to witness things like that. And I love that because you see that with Jesus, like he saw the people and even when he healed them, it was because he had compassion for them. So if you don't have compassion for that person, then it's true. Like, they're like, I don't want to hear anything you're saying. Like, I know you hate me. So I love that you you said that. Like, I love them. I care about them. And when they see that, then they'll be a lot more receptive to listen to you. So and I also want to get into um, that you are okay. You are an amazing artist. I've seen Mm -hmm. your work. The Mm -hmm. video you did um, drawing like, um, what is the one with Jesus? It was like in less than I forgot how many minutes. Oh, yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. That was amazing. But how did you get into art? Because it wasn't just something you did since you were like a little kid and all that. So can you just share a little bit of that? Oh, that's such a great question. I'm Mm. so glad you're asking about that because I'm a mixed bag on my channel. So if you go over there, I am what I am. Like you have Mm. art, you have all Mm. this other stuff. I have parodies. Oh, I love those. Uh, those are good. <laughs> oh man, it's so nice. Like, cause you know what it is? It's not a. It's not that we're called. We're gifted, right? Yeah. And so we walk in those gifts, and just it just naturally yeah. happens, and God takes over. And um, but yeah, art. Oh man, that's a story. Um, because you're right. I didn't grow up. I grew up with an artistic bend. Mm-hmm. Like I remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. Lott. I will never forget Mrs. Lott in Rio Doso. We were moving to Oklahoma, and she did not have favorites. Let me be clear, (laughs) but she saw something in me that nobody else in my entire life ever saw, but Mrs. Lott saw. Mm -hmm. And I always remembered this in my little mind. She would have me go into like the library area in the classroom and just rearrange it. However I wanted, I never understood why 
she would have me um, go to like a color wall and uh, rearrange it. And I never understood why. She would have me color just get in. This is in the early 90s. Mm. So getting out of the whole draw in the lines thing wasn't like a thing yet. Like the open ended. She'd give me a piece of paper and she's like, just draw, like draw. Mm. And uh, I remember when we were leaving, Mrs. Lott, she told my mom, she's like, I've waited my whole career for a child like this. Like, please don't go. Mm. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) me? And it was this. She saw the art, the artist in me. It was always about the art. Mm. And I just never did anything with it. Nobody ever um, – I never knew there was that in me. Mm. And then I had my second child. <laughs> mm. um, I went through a really rough time after I had my second child because um, I always say that my first child got me closer to God. But Bella made me a better parent mm. because mm. Um, I just – saw things differently after her, but it was rough. Mm -hmm. I had a really hard time with my first child after I had my second and it was not fun. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just the, that's the Cliff's notes version. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I, I went Christian at this point, you know, like I'm, I, I, and I still struggled. I I was in a, a hard place and, um, I'm in the middle of this mess. Like my friend comes over, right? My friend comes over. Um, I smell like I'm in my robe. I'm a, I'm a new mom. And she gives me this gift. It's a little, little tiny, just a tiny canvas, right? Mm. I unwrap it and it's a painting. Mm. I'm like, what? And it's just so simple. It's a background with three crosses on it with the little hills. And I'm like, mm-hmm. how did you do this? Mm. Mm-hmm. The inspiration was, was, I, I can't even express it. Yeah. Like that afternoon, I'm like, she's like, it was just acrylic paint. Mm. I'm like, really? That's, that's how you do this? That's it? I go out to Hobby Lobby, spent like 20 bucks, which was a lot of money to me at the time, mm-hmm. uh, to buy art supplies. And it, I went to the school of YouTube yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and got really good really fast because that it was in me. I always had that gift. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, 2017, yeah, that I started painting, December 2017. Oh. Mm-hmm. And by the next year, I was taking commissions. And it was always like, oh, I wonder if I could do this. Oh, I can. Mm-hmm. I wonder if I can do that. Oh, I can. Yeah. And it just rolled over. Portraits. Um, and I still to this day think the hardest paintings are impressionistic paintings. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody thinks they're so easy. They're not. Um, but then uh, people get wind of this. And uh, I didn't really start using my – I didn't start using my uh, YouTube channel for theology a lot. But I did do some paintings on there. And I'm like, I'm going to film it. And uh, I did a Jesus face painting, a huge one. It actually took me three months to prep for that. Wow. Mm. Practicing almost every day. It took a lot of work. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I yeah, it's on my YouTube channel, yeah. but it's a, a Jesus face in three. No, five, five minutes, mm-hmm. less than five minutes. And that is it's one shot. They filmed mm. me doing it in one wow. shot. And it was for my church that I went to at the time. Uh, and we did it for three services to mm. behold the lamb mm. uh, by Christian Sandfall. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. I love that. Is that your painting yeah. back behind you? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Actually, that's so funny. <laughs> that's that's the painting that um, uh, they did a separate film with that for my church, and that was mm. one of the paintings that I filmed them, or they filmed me painting. How funny! Oh, cool. I love that. I love that painting though. Yeah, I, I love like forest paintings. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I also just want to really quickly because I remember, like you were saying that you also there was a a thing that you were struggling with was that you were really embarrassed and I want to talk about that because I think a lot of times people who are in the new age they their pride you know really gets to them and they they get saved and you know they start to read the bible and then they're like oh my goodness like this is embarrassing that he didn't know this stuff like it's right there but it's true like they were just they were deceived that's the reason why it's like if you were like I don't know it just makes me so sad when you see a lot of people who then become Christians and then they do go back because they're like, I'm embarrassed. Like people mm-hmm. in the other, you know, those areas, they understand me more and they can relate to me and they're more loving and forgiving, quote unquote. But what would you say to that person who maybe is a new believer and they're just feeling embarrassed and they feel like, I don't know where to go. And and maybe just some resources too. Maybe they feel overwhelmed. Like, where do I even start? Like, where do I begin? Mm-hmm. Do I just go from Genesis to Revelation, like, what do I do? But Mm -hmm. so what would be some, you know, encouragement or resources that you would give to new believers? 
Well, first, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I need to remind people as well that I went, I, I, even after I got caught up in all this new age stuff, I went to church for years and mm-hmm. never knew that what I believed was new age. Yeah. Nobody, I didn't realize there was a name for it until I left it mm-hmm. is what I say. And um, so that's important. This isn't necessarily something you'll always hear from the pulpit because it's made to sound Christian, yeah. mm-hmm. which is the, the whole deception of it. Secondly, the Bible does talk about Satan not being a red dude with pointy ears and a pitchfork. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's pretty. He's beautiful. And people are like, oh, but my spirit guides. Oh, but your spirit guides are supposed to be beautiful. Like that's the whole deception. And mm-hmm. that's the, the whole reason why it's so evil. Yeah. Um, and third, as far as resources. So, um, yeah, it is overwhelming. And I'm different because it's like I liked going down that rabbit hole for other people. They don't Mm -hmm. they're like, this is too much. I can't. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you um, if if the God of the universe is real. Which he is. (laughs) um, You spending alone time with him is paramount. Prayer is not just a Christian thing. It's a spiritual weapon. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're alone and you're overwhelmed, just shut the computer Stop what you're doing. Just pray. Like, slow down. Mm-hmm. Spend that time with him. I know that sounds so simple, but it's a revolutionary. Amen. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, and the whole read your Bible in a year thing, stop doing that. <laughs> it's perfectly, yeah, just um, you eat an elephant one spoon at a time, spoonful mm-hmm. at a time. Amen. When you're reading the Bible, um, it is a history book, but it's yeah. also, also a spiritual book. And it's not meant to be read the way that our 21st century Western mind kind of would perceive it to be. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to take it one thing at a time and it's a big book. So if I'm telling you to start anywhere, I would say start in the gospels because to know the authentic Jesus Mm -hmm. is really important. Mm -hmm. That alone, by the way, especially new agers, uh, Doreen, I'm sure she's um, probably mentioned this as well, but that undid a lot for her just reading the gospels because she's like, Oh, this is a different gasp. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is not the Jesus I believe in. Mm -hmm. Um, so that alone, and it's, it's four gospels. And as far as resources, of course, you have people like me, Stephen Bancars, Doreen, Mike Kaiser, and just take it one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that we want to, especially in the information age, uh, we want, we have so much at our fingertips. Um, but the best resources that you have first is to authentically understand what Christianity is, what the gospel mm-hmm. is and who Jesus is. Those are the three things. Um, that I would say that uh, would be very important because if, if you don't understand those three things, uh, then I think that the foundation for your walk will be kind of a bumpy one, like Jesus and the gospel first and foremost, and then trusting and reading the Bible. Amen. So if, if you got that, I think that you're, you got a good thing going for you. Mm-hmm. I love that. And that's what, um, Jeremiah and Andrew were saying from cultish. They were saying like, the advice they would give to know that you're not in a cult is not by studying even all the different cults because there's a ton out there. Um, they're like, we do that for you. And then and we're like, you can just look at their page. But it would be to know the Bible, like to know the gospel, the good news, not just know, oh, I know the gospel means good news, but to know what it means, it, like know that you are a sinner and that Jesus died for you. And like you need to be able to explain it because if you can't, then when these cults come to you, you're going to be like, hmm, like that kind of makes sense. or, mm-hmm. And then you will be deceived. And so I love that is that there's so many things out there, right? The, you, the world of YouTube and you can get into these rabbit holes. It can be yeah. for good, which it was for you, but also it can be really bad because people then find these wackadoos, like crazy mm-hmm. people who are very, very new age and new thought and all this stuff, but they don't realize it because they seem like good people. Like, like we always mm-hmm. tell people, Mormons are the nicest people you'll ever meet. They really are. But that doesn't mean that what they have is the truth because they don't. And so I, I just like that, that you say that because like we are supposed to study. We are supposed to be apologists. Like it doesn't matter if you're a mom with four kids and you feel like, oh, I can't do that. Like we all are supposed to. And I love the um, study and but I love the verse um, in First Peter three fifteen through sixteen mm-hmm. or fifteen. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And I see that with you, and that's why I just wanted to encourage you is that 
when I see like your YouTube videos and stuff, I love that you're not afraid to offend people. You're not afraid to speak the truth, but you say it in love and gentleness and respect Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. those people because you are in it. You understand if someone just came to you being rude and saying, you're so stupid, like that would be something you're like, I don't want to even listen to anything you're saying. So Mm -hmm. what are some other ways that people can reach you, find you? And do you have any other closing thoughts for our listeners? Um, Well, I'm on Instagram um, and Facebook and, of course, YouTube. Mm -hmm. I can only handle so much social media at a time. (laughs) Um, and, um, as far as closing thoughts, um, I would just encourage people to kind of, especially if you're like in the new age and you have these beliefs and you're thinking, well, I don't understand. I don't get why they're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that's the point is that if I were Satan, if I were the devil, I, I would come wrapped up with what the human heart wants. Mm -hmm. And if your eternity is on the line, like why, why isn't it worth it to look? And I think a lot of people don't do this because of the dismay they have for Christians. Yeah. Mm. But that doesn't change if it's true or not. And if it's true, you need to know if it's not true, you need to know why it's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm. Forget what other people have said, go down that journey and actually try to think of what Christians actually believe, what Jesus actually taught. And if you actually fervently disagree with that, then at least you have some sort of like decision on that aspect. But a lot of people don't get it. So Mm -hmm. it's basically like a challenge, just kind of challenging people to, and I would challenge Christians as well too. um, really watch yourself. Like we will be held accountable for things that we say and how we say Mm -hmm. it. And we don't want to be part of that problem. So just be prayerful with how we approach people that have differing beliefs and stuff. But Mm -hmm. but yeah. And we don't want to be on either end, like you're saying. We don't want to take... Joel Steen's, yeah. <laughs> his view, you know, <laughs> yeah. we don't want to be too soft, but we also yeah. don't want to be too hard. But like the Bible says to be firm, but loving, you know, so yeah. it's the balance of as we draw closer to God's word and to him, then I think that will come naturally. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I love it too. I just wanted to share this verse because this is our main verse, Calvary Conversations. It's Galatians 6, 14. As for me, may never boast about anything accept the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interests in the world have been crucified and the wor- world's interests in me have also been crucified or died. And so I love that because that's what I see in your life is like before you did everything to lie and everything for everyone to like you and then you found out that this isn't working and I'm not a good person and you ha- you're at the end of yourself. So now you're realizing I am going to speak the truth in love. I'm going to share the good news. And if the world hates me, praise God, they hated Jesus too. So that's okay. But I love that about you. And um, we encourage everyone to check out your YouTube channel, Melissa Doherty, your Instagram, Melissa Doherty77. We'll have all that in the description below. But we're excited to hopefully even have you on again. I know we wanted to talk about how the New Age has infiltrated the church and we wanted to talk about like Word of Faith, all that stuff that you have on your channel, which they can watch too. But gonna have to have you on again sometime but thank you for joining us yeah well thanks for having me guys it's been great hey guys thanks so much for joining us on calvary conversations if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in calvary conversations if you would like to see us and you guys are listening on podcast platform you can go over to youtube and like and subscribe also please make sure to follow us on instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. If you'd like to check them out, please go to the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.